We're back! Yes! We've had a couple of weeks break, haven't we? But no, we're back to adventures. And it's time to go again. I hope you've had a fantastic time over Christmas. Did Father Christmas bring you anything nice? Did you have a good time with your families? Did you get up to doing lots of different things? We certainly got up to a few different things over, over the Christmas time. I got some, some nice presents. Do you want to see what they are? I got this, um, this book. It's about doing 20 different walks all around Swindon. We've done one already. We went up to a place called Upper Upham. I've never heard of that before, but we found a walk there. Unfortunately, it was a bit foggy the day we did it, so we couldn't see very much, but we've done a walk. And do you know what? One of my aims this year is to try and do all 20 before the end of the year. Do you reckon I might be able to do that or not? <laughs> we'll have to see. But I also got some other things as well. I got, I got some cooking stuff. So I got a nice new pan that's called the whatever pan. And you can cook whatever in it, whether it's in the oven, on the hob, on the barbecue, wherever. So we're playing with that. And I got a drinks machine to make some coffee and, um, and some other kind of drinks, hot chocolate and all those kind of things. That was a special treat for me. And then I got a bit of chocolate too to keep me going. But I hope you've, um, you've had some, a good time with your families and done lots of exciting things. But the question is, can you remember what we do at Adventurers? Do you think, what's happened to the pig? Do you think he's remembered what to do? Do you think he's remembered where to come? Because look, it doesn't look like I'm at home, does it? Can you see him? Can you? Ah, he's behind you, yes! I can see him, he's up here, Woo. Shall I get him? Woo. Oh. He's obviously feeling energetic doing a little somersault down, isn't he? So are you ready? Do you have your pennies? And are we ready to sing? Do you see this penny? It is brought by me For the little children far across the sea Hurry penny quickly though you are so small Help to tell the children Jesus loves them all and that's a great thing to know, isn't it? That Jesus loves us. And that's what we've been thinking about over Christmas, isn't it? Is Jesus coming to be our saviour? Because he loves us so much. But he doesn't just love us, he loves all over the world. Because it's whoever believes in the Lord Jesus, God so loved them. And so we're going to pray for the children in Myanmar and maybe think of children in all sorts of different parts of the, the world at the moment because lots of children are suffering as, uh, because of the virus and because of all that's going on as much as we are. So let's just put our hands together and let's pray. Our Father, we just thank you for the time that we've been able to enjoy with our families over Christmas. And our Father, we just thank you that you do love us. Thank you that you loved us so much. You died you came to be our saviour. And our Father, we just thank you that we can pray for people in other parts of the world. We particularly pray for the children who are suffering in whatever part of the world they're in, through the virus or through the lockdown or through not having enough food to eat or not feeling very well. We just pray that you'll just be with them. Particularly be with the children in Myanmar, we pray, and help them in their lives and provide for all of their needs, we ask. And we just ask too that you might just help us as we listen to the story that we might hear what you are saying to us. Amen. Well, I hope you're sitting comfortably. Are you ready? Because it's story time! Over Christmas we've been thinking about the birth of a very special baby, haven't we? We've been thinking about Jesus being born to be our saviour. But now we're moving on and we're thinking about a different part of the Bible. But today we're thinking again about a special baby that had been born. 
we're going to start way, way back in, in Israel with a man named Elkanah. And he had a wife called Hannah. But Hannah was very, very sad because she didn't have any children. And that's what she wanted more than anything else. But however hard they tried, they couldn't have any children. And what made matters even worse and made Hannah even sadder was that one of her friends or one of the people that lived in the home did have children and she used to make fun of her and say, nah, 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 I've got children, you have a nah, 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 nah. And that was really, really horrible for Hannah. It's like that at school, isn't it? Sometimes if people make fun of us, it's not very nice and we get very, very sad. And that's what Hannah felt like. And so we have Hannah and Akana. But what they did was something every year. Every year they went on a big long journey. Are you going to come and see where they went? Yes, Alkana and uh, Hannah went to the temple. They went to a place called Shiloh and they went once a year for a very special occasion so that they could worship God together with the priests. It's a bit like that for us, isn't it? At the moment, we're not able to go to, to adventurers very often. In fact, we haven't been for a very long time, have we? haven't met for adventurers. Some of you have been to, able to go to church, but others haven't been to church for a very long time. But in Bible times, they only ever went once a year. And so they went and uh, they spent some time worshipping to God together. And Hannah was still very, very sad and very, very upset with what was going on and the fun that was being made of her. In fact, she was, she was so upset that she couldn't even eat. And Alcana couldn't really understand why. I love you, he said. And why are you feel like that? Because it doesn't really matter whether you have children or not. I love you, it doesn't make any difference. You're very special to me, but but still, Hannah was 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 really, 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 really sad. And she did the only thing that she could really think that she could do. What do you think that might have been? Remember, where was she? She was in the temple, and so she went right to the front, and she started to. You've got it. She started to pray because she realised that nobody else could help her. And so what she did, she started to, to tell God how she felt and tell him how upset she was and how sad it made her. And then she prayed and asked God whether he would answer her prayer and give her a son. And if God did give her a son, then she would, she would give that son back to God so that he could serve God for the rest of his life. And she was there praying very, very passionately about it. And her, her lips were moving, but there was nothing coming out of her mouth because she was praying in her heart. But in, in the chairs behind, there was a man sitting there called Eli. Now he was the most important religious man in the country. He was the high priest. And so he was in charge of this very special place, the temple. And he couldn't work out what was going on because he could see Hannah kind of talking but nothing coming out. And he thought, what on earth is going on? So he went up to her and said, what's happening? Why are you doing this? What's up with you? And Hannah told him, I have, uh, I've been married to Elkanah for a very long time, but God hasn't given me children. And I'm praying that God will, will answer my prayer and give me a son and then I'll give him back to God to serve him. 
And Eli then realised that Hannah was really, really serious and that she was really praying to God and asking for his help. And so he said to her, don't worry, God has heard you. And do you know what? That made Hannah feel so much better to know that God had heard her. That's what she wanted to know. And that made her heart feel so much better. And so she left the temple and she went home with Alcana and the rest of the family group. When it was time for Hannah and uh, Elkanah to go back up to Shiloh the following year, do you know what? Hannah didn't go. I wonder why. Can you think about why? Hannah might not have been able to go up to the, t to the temple the following year. It's because she had a little baby. She had a little baby boy. And she called his name Samuel. Because Samuel means heard by God. You see, God had heard Hannah's prayer. And he had answered Hannah's prayer and had given her a little baby son. And so she was too busy looking after Samuel that she wasn't able to make the big long journey all the way to Shiloh. But Hannah did remember her promise. What was the promise that Hannah made? She would give her son back to God. So when Samuel was old enough, and he was a bit bigger than he is here now, Hannah took Samuel and they went to Shiloh and they left Samuel there with Eli, the high priest. And do you know what? Hannah only saw her son once every year when she went to the temple for their special time. And every year she used to break him a new coat. And although she was sad that she didn't see Samuel that often, she was really happy because God had answered her prayer and Hannah was able to give back to God what he had given to her. Now, Hannah has some very important lessons from that, isn't it? About how important it is that we pray. When Hannah didn't know what to do, when Hannah had come to the end and life was so difficult for her, and she, she turned to the person that could really help her, and that was God. Now, we all live in difficult times at the moment, don't we? And, and I know that many of you have to go back to school or to nursery or to play group this week. And some people, and that might be you, are feeling quite anxious about that and quite worried about what, that might, what, it might, what might happen. And your mums and dads might be a little bit too. Well, the wonderful thing to know is that we can pray and we can ask God to help us. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Our Father, we just thank you that we can bring everything to you. Thank you that you are concerned about all that goes on in our lives. And we just pray for uh, all the children as they go back to school and to playgroup and to nursery this week. We pray that you'll just watch over them, that you will keep them safe. We pray that they keep them from getting the virus. We pray that you might just help them to settle back into school with all the things that are going on around. And we don't really know how, what's going to happen, but we thank you that we, you are God and we can trust you. And we just ask for your help now. Amen. So we can pray to God whenever we have something that, that, that really troubles us. In fact, we can do that all the time. You see, one great advantage that we have, that not like Hannah and Alcana, but they could only go to, up to the temple once a year. You see, we can pray to God any time because if 
if we love the Lord Jesus, he lives within us. If we ask Jesus to forgive us, to be our saviour, as we were thinking about at Christmas, he lives within us. So he's there all the time. And so we can talk to God and we can pray to God for all sorts of different things that are happening. And the other important thing to remember is that God always answers our prayers. Maybe not in the way that God answered for Hannah, because God doesn't always say yes, or God doesn't always give us what we want. But God does give us what we need. And God was always there to help us in whatever situation that we're in. So it might be an answer that's a yes, it might be an answer that's a no. It might be an answer that it's not yet, or maybe, or in the future. Or it might be an answer, just trust me now. But God is always there to answer our prayers because God always hears us. And so that's the thing that we can learn from this story, the beginning of the story of Samuel. And we're going to think about Samuel in the next few weeks and other things that happened to him in his life. But today, remember that this week, if you're feeling worried, if you're feeling anxious, then we can pray to God because he hears us and he will help us. Right, now it's going time to get back to that craft table. Are you ready? Esther, here we come! Hello everybody. I hope you've had a great Christmas and I'm wishing you all a very happy new year. I was so excited on New Year's Day to wake up to find it was snowing. It didn't stay for very long, but I did go for a lovely walk with Katie just to enjoy being in the snow before it all melted, which got me to thinking about making some snowflakes, which I've made here. And on each snowflake, I've written either a thank you or a please because in the story that you had today, Hannah was praying to God and asking for a baby because she didn't have one and she was really sad. And so I got to thinking that this beginning of the new year, we have so much to be thankful for. And sometimes we have things that we want to ask God for. So I thought if we make a snowflake and write on each one I've got, on here, thank you for a family who loves me. I've got thank you for food, for clothes, for friends, for a happy job to go to, and uh, lots of other things. And also I've put some requests as well, some pleases. And I've asked, please help to keep us safe from all those COVID germs that are around at the moment. And also help me to be more kind and loving to my family and those people that I work with. Now you will have different pleases and thank yous, but you can all have a little go at trying a snowflake and then writing or getting your mums and dads to write on there a please and a thank you. So first of all, I started off with a circle, just a white piece of paper. Then I folded it in half and then folded it again. And then if you get a pair of scissors, you can start doing the fun bit, which is lots of little cuts into the paper. See, I've done a little triangle there. You can do lots of different cuts. And the beautiful thing about snowflakes is that when God makes them, he makes them all unique and special. No two snowflakes are the same and so it doesn't matter how you do your snowflakes because you can make your own unique and special snowflakes. I'll just cut along here and I love the feeling of when you get, you've done all the different cuts and then open it up to see what it looks like. So just cutting it along here. So we're just cutting lots of little 
of doing little triangles. I'm not sure what these will come out with, but it'll be interesting to see. And when you've finished, you can open it up. Oh, and there I've got my snowflake. Now I've got different sizes, so just use different circles, size ones. So you do exactly the same. And then you can write down something to be thankful for. And then you can decorate. So I've just used some little silver glue and you can do little dobs of glue. Just to make it look really pretty. So you can do that all the way through and then you can do lots of different patterns. If you're really good at cutting through thick paper, you can always fold it again to make an even more of a pattern like this one. And of course, I've written on here, thank you for the Lord Jesus who loved me so much and who has forgiven me for all the wrong things that I've done. And that is the biggest thank you that we can do so I'm going to put that one up on my window and I wonder whether we're going to get some more snow this week or not but at least I will have some snowflakes in my home so I'm going to put that one here and it's going to help me remind me of all the things I have to be thankful for anyway I hope you have fun having a go at lots of different snowflakes. Take care. Bye. Well, I hope you have fun making your snowflakes. Hope you enjoyed being in the snow too with a little bit we had and then we'll be able to see what you've been up to. We've missed seeing your crafts and your activities over the last couple of weeks. We've just got one or two to show you at the moment, but um, hopefully you'll be able to get back into it and we'll be able to see the great things that you're able to come up with. But there's one more thing before we go, and it's the memory verse, isn't it? And we're thinking about prayer, and we're thinking about talking to God, and our memory verse this week is from Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. And it says, Call to me, and I will answer you. Call to me and I will answer you. That's what God's telling Jeremiah. He said, call to me and I, God, will answer your prayer. So can you say it with me? Call to me and I will answer you. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Well done. Hopefully you'll be able to say that to your mums and dads and then we'll be able to uh, add some more stickers to the bottle charts. I'll try and sort those out over this coming week so that we can see where we've all got to. But for now, I trust that you keep safe and well this week. Have fun and we'll see you next week.